Oh, yo, hey there. I'm just looking on the internet for some gaming deals. I see that PS5s are like 10% off everywhere, so that's cool. Oh, let's go. Here's one on this website, uh, Gertrude's List. Well, whatever. It's only $40. You gotta hit it big once in a while. All right, I just ordered it. The seller said I can pick it up whenever I want, so let me get ready. Okay, I, I think I'm ready. Uh, th this, this is gonna be a long walk. All right, here I am in No Name, Colorado. Uh, it's a little barren here, but it seems like a nice neighborhood. Oh, hey, I think we're finally at the place. I'm just here to pick up the PS5. Hey guys, can you like, go get that for him? Hey yo bro, can I talk to you for a second? Brother, how are we supposed to make this a PS5? Look, I don't know, brother, but we've really got to sell this thing. You don't want to keep living in this dump, do you? No, no! We hate it here, but how do we make a GS5 into a PS5? I got it! Is everything all right? It's done! Oh wow, thank you for your business! <laughs> he, he's gone now, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Alright, I'm home. I got the new PlayStation 5. It's much lighter than I thought it would be, but whatever. I'm really excited to play Street Fighter 6. Tekken 8 when it comes out. I really didn't grow up with a whole lot of PlayStation franchises besides Crash, so I'm really excited to see what I get into. Pretty nice box. Here on the side we get to see what the console includes. Oh, sorry, we get to see what the console include. And on the other side we see... wait... Game Station 5? Now that I'm looking at it even more, these don't look like the new DualSense controllers. What is this thing? This, my friend, is what you call a bootleg console. The term bootleg or bootlegging has taken a few different meanings in the past, but the main definition of it has pretty much remained the same throughout history. Bootlegging means to make or sell certain products illegally to gain profit. In the gaming world, the term usually associates itself with these types of consoles and games. Consoles like these are meant to deceive people into thinking it's something else. For example, a boy wants to play Rocket League with his friends. Now, PCs are pretty expensive nowadays, but Rocket League has cross-platform support so he can play it on PS5. He points to the GS5 sitting in the clearance section of Walmart and his parents get it for him. He turns it on and BOOM! Mediocrity and disappointment. Grandma hears the grandkid talking about how they want a PS5. She goes to write it and picks up this console that looks like a PS5. Grandkid opens it up, turns it on, and BOOM! Mediocrity and disappointment. Bootleg consoles and bootleg games only bring pain and suffering. Why is that? Here, let me show you. Let's open this stupid thing up. First, let's look at the controllers. They're so tiny, I could literally break this thing no problem. It's made out of cheap, thin plastic, and it just feels awful. The buttons aren't bad for being the GS5 controller, but still not great. They're not even labeled or anything, so I just have to guess what buttons do in games. The D-pad isn't even a real D-pad. It's four buttons, just like the buttons on the other side of the controller. The start and select buttons stick out way too far, like seriously, they're made out of rubber and I feel like I could snap these. Oh, and the L and R buttons? They don't exist. Alright, let's get a closer look at the GS5 itself. It's almost as light as the tiny controller, and the console is pretty tiny as well. It's got USB ports for the controllers, which, by the way, the controller wire is only 3 feet long. There's the power and reset button, and on the back there's the AC adapter, which says DC in, or direct current. The port isn't even a DC in, it's a micro USB port. And on top of that, the AC adapter wire is even shorter, clocking in at around 2 feet. There's AV out for audio and video, which the cables in the box are the cheapest things imaginable. They couldn't even give me two audio channels, they only gave me the right side. There's supposed to be an HDMI port and a micro SD card slot, but... They don't exist either. 
After reading the instructions, which I can't even do because they're mostly in Russian, I guess it's time to boot this thing up. Oh wait, there's one more thing I gotta talk about. The GS5 stand. It just snaps on the bottom of your GS5 like so, and there we go. I guess it's just supposed to make me feel better. Alright, no more hardware talk. It's time to see what the GS5 is on the screen. This is the... Wait. Who who made this thing? Oh. You're, you're kidding. Well, folks, this is the Game Station Game Station 5. Here's the main menu, boasting about its game selection of 200 games. Wow, that's a lot of games. But one thing I find hilarious is that on the box, there's literally no mention of these games anywhere. Aside from the name of the console, the controllers, and a few other things like plug and play and two players, there's literally no indication that this is a game console. You can't put any games in the thing, and nowhere in the box does it say 200 games, so the young boy and the grandchild in my examples that I gave earlier have no idea what games are on this thing. I don't even know what games are on this thing. But I guess, let's get started. I'm not going to talk about all 200 games, but mostly just the interesting ones. Starting off, we have Super Mario 3. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, 3. It's just 3. Other than the title screen, there really isn't anything different about this version of the game. It's just Super Mario Bros. 3. Next, we have Super Mario Bros. Never, never mind, this game just doesn't have a title, I guess. That's a reoccurring thing with the actual NES games on this console. They either have the title missing on the title screen, or they have the company name and copyright date removed, or both. Believe it or not, it's illegal to resell games that aren't yours. Yes, in fact, this is an act of piracy. You know piracy, the little disclaimer before every movie saying how you could spend five years in prison or have to pay a $250,000 fine if you commit it? Well, what if you just edit the game's code so the game isn't the same game anymore? Yeah, that may or may not still be technically illegal, so GameStation HQ or whoever made this thing are still criminals. Where were we? Mario? Yeah, the game is pretty normal aside from it running way too fast. Seriously, the music is sped up and the game is controlling a lot faster. Why is it doing this? I don't know. Super Contra, which isn't even Super Contra, it's just Contra 1. A weird thing about this version is that I couldn't get the Konami code to work at all, but an even weirder thing about this version is that you don't go to the game automatically. There's a menu where you can actually start with different guns, extra lives, and you can pick what level you want to play. Why does this exist? I don't know, but it's kinda sick. Okay, let's move on to the stars of the show, the original games. First we have Meccano. This is how you know it's gonna be good. This buzzing won't stop! The entire time you're playing the game, you hear this awful noise! All you do is fill in the picture with the provided shape, so good one for the kiddos, I guess, but make sure you mute the TV or something. Galligant. What's with these awful songs that just loop through the whole game? This one at least sounds like a song. Not a good one, though. Other than that, there's not much here, just a lame vertical shooter. Garden War. It's just Galligant. Literally the same exact game with the same exact song. But this time there's bugs and flowers. I think it's safe to say we're not missing much with this one. Gate. You play as a little mushroom thing, avoiding hungry yo-yos while collecting hearts. An interesting concept to say the least, I admire the creativity here. The game is silent, which I would normally say is a bad thing, but after the previous three, some peace and quiet is appreciated. Hallyhoo. Gotta be one of the funniest names I've ever heard for a game, but unfortunately this is pretty much just gate, meaning it kinda sucks. Labyrinth. Brother, I don't even know what I'm supposed to say about this one. It's pretty easy to understand what I'm supposed to do, but actually doing it? This game is making my brain rot, and this is a puzzle game. Panzer attack. You're a tank shooting bigger tanks while they shoot eggs at you, while missiles come from behind. I'm pretty sure this is another Galligant clone. The song is different, I'm not gonna say it's better though. Polar Bat. Yep, this is just Panzer attack. You play as the boy who shoots energy balls to kill bats. Okay guys, you wanna know something? Believe it or not, bats live pretty much everywhere, besides the Arctic and Antarctica. Bats can't live there. Why are they here then? It's simple. The game's bad. Rural Goblin. It's whack-a-mole, but you whack these little radish goblin things while avoiding the flowers that come out of the hole. I don't know how it works either. A funny thing about this game is that your hammer automatically goes to the hole with the goblin or the flower. Since these are all NES games, you only need two buttons, the A and B buttons. So what are the other buttons on the controller for? Well, these are turbo buttons, meaning if you hold one it will constantly input A or B. Meaning that if you just hold the turbo button down to use the hammer, it's an automatic win. Robot. 
It's just Labyrinth from earlier, but this time you're a robot. Awesome! Small Dinosaur. You play as a dinosaur, and I won't lie, he's pretty small. You collect things that this baby who should probably not be up there is throwing. First of all, my man here looks more like a crocodile, not a dinosaur. Second of all, how did this baby learn to generate lightning and control it? I don't even know what to say, I can't tell if I'm impressed or horrified by this. The Archer. This is just Polar Bat, which is just Panzer Attack. Same song, same controls, same bad game. This time you're the Archer, and instead of bats, you're shooting gargoyles? I don't know, I don't really want to play Panzer Polar Archer ever again. Twin cards. This is literally matching. A deck of cards isn't that much, you know, and you can play a ton of games with those that are infinitely funner than this stupid thing. Warrior. You're in this maze thing and you have to shoot down the enemies for points. Now, it looks like I have a gun, right? Well, I don't. I have to run all around the maze just to get the gun. Just when I get used to the stupid controls, I lose the gun and have to go collect it again. This is bad. Abscon D. There's a stupid alien on a stupid adventure. He left his M&Ms all over the place and gets chopped into alien pieces. I literally have nothing else to say. Aim Cruise. One of the better games on here. It's alright, not really anything special. I will say the game's aesthetic is pretty neat. Bug Catcher. This is art. You play as a mutated freak of nature running side to side eating worms. You change color depending on what worms you can eat. Hey, what's this one, a black glowy worm? Must be a cool power for something. Maybe you can eat any worm you want or something like that. Nope. This worm gives you an instant game over. Imagine if you were playing Castlevania. You break open the wall to reveal a pork chop. The pork chop is green and moldy. You eat it and you instantly collapse, die, and game over. Back to the start of the block for you. Busy Bar. This one is pretty alright too. Not great. It's very simple, but it's not bad. You're this little bartender mouse who has to serve customers. The customers say what they want, you select it, and then you have to time your throws just right so the drink slides to the customer. The game is very picky about where the drink lands though, it seems a little unfair in spots, but hey, it's alright for a GS5 game. Candy Workshop I don't understand this one at all, there's these machines that shoot candy that I have to put on the conveyor belt. No matter what order I did it in though, I just kept losing and getting game overs. There has to be a right way to do this, but there's no manual or anything for this game, so I just have to stand here and throw candy on the belt praying that I win. Contest, or Contest 2004. This game reminds me of BattleBots, but if it was terrible. Literally, I can move all around and still hit this guy, my bullets just home right in on him. There really isn't anything to winning though, because the game just kinda does this looping thing. You can't lose, you can't win, you're just trapped in a box in space forever in the year 2004. Cookies Labyrinth. Alright, I guess it's story time. If you give a mouse a cookie, he'll probably look around for some more. When he gets some more, he'll probably eat them. When he's done, he may try and find the exit. When he tries to find the exit, he'll realize that there is no exit. When he realizes that there is no exit, he realizes that he's stuck forever in the GS5. Look, little mouse, I didn't choose this fate for you. Someone trapped you in this horrible abomination of a game on this horrible abomination of a console. One day, you'll be free. One day. Crystal Blast! You press a button to launch a nuclear warhead on some oranges, and that's pretty much it. Also, the hitboxes are so wonky on this one. Like, look, how did I not hit that? Deformable. We're driving on the interstate while collecting gems. Why are we driving here anyway? There's giant potholes, road close signs, and even street signs that are just in the road. Couldn't we have picked a better spot? Dejectile. Look familiar at all? Maybe? Yeah, this is just Bomberman, and you want to know something? Bomberman is on the GS5. Why is this game on here, let alone why does this game exist? Egg Contest. There is a buff chicken on my screen. This is the best game on the GS5. Escape Way. Wow, this one is actually kind of tolerable. Maybe even a little bit of fun. It's a very simple platformer, but there's a really cool mechanic when it comes to jumping. The little bootleg cool spot right here is the only one that can jump, so you have to change the position of them so the sunglasses ball can help the other balls not get hurt. It's a really unique mechanic, it's kind of cool. Alright, I need to take a break. But, you know, just thinking about the GS5, whose idea was it? Who at GameStation HQ woke up and was like, I'm gonna make a PS5 ripoff and fill it with a bunch of NES games and disappoint anyone who buys this thing? Something just as weird is who in the right mind would sell this to someone? Which reminds me, 
I have a phone call to make. Yo, what? Hey, I think it's for you. Hey, how's it? It's for you. What do you want? Yeah? No! Our policy here, no refunds, no returns, and most importantly, don't come back! So, what do you want? You know, I think he was just thanking us for the GS5. Oh, cool. He sounded really angry with us. I'm glad he's not. I thought he would have found out that it's a PS5, but I'm glad he's having fun. We're such good people. Alright. Where were we at? Oh, yeah, you still need to burn those discs and make copies of 2005's Rebound, starring Martin Lawrence. <laughs> good thinking. Let's get this done. Fair's treasure, or fairy's treasure, I guess. You play as a fairy in this one, and you have to collect your treasure. At first, I didn't know what I was doing, I didn't know how to control the game at all. But it turns out that this little red dot, this tiny, unseeable red pixel, is how I aim. It goes back and forth, and I just have to time it to get the treasure. Final Blood. This game is bad. Like, this may be one of the most boring games on this thing. All you're doing is looking around and shooting tanks and trucks. It looks different, not good, but different. That's the only thing I can really say about this game. The only other thing is that looking around takes forever. I can't even tell if I've made a full 360 yet. Fling Ball. This one is weird. You fling a ball, I guess the title was accurate, at a board with different tiles while trying to avoid the robot, but halfway through the game, you and the computer player switch places and you become the robot. Hey, as long as I'm not a robot walking through that cursed labyrinth, I'm okay with being a robot. Forest Adventure. I'm not gonna say it's great, but it's an alright linear platformer, especially for being on the GS5. It's kinda charming in a way. You're a red ball going through the level and collecting gems. It's very simplistic, but at least there's actually some sort of value of fun to have here. Also, the little jumping dance at the end of the level is amazing. Fruit Gift. You put fruit in slots by shifting which fruit you want. The annoying thing about this game is that the little fruit cycle to choose your fruit, yeah, you can't go back. Meaning if you need a specific fruit right now and you accidentally went past it, you have to go cycle through the whole list of fruit again. This is putrid. Hammer and Nail. You play as a hammer doing what a hammer does best. This is the entire game, just hammering in nails and pretending that you're Handy Manny. Happy Match. Dude, I swear if this is another- Yep, this is another matching game. Why is there more than one matching game? Why is there a matching game? IQ Champion. Sounds like a quiz game, right? Wrong. In this game, you're shooting bees. The most interesting thing about this game is that you get to see the developer of the game, Dongjin Software Company, or also known as Nice Code Software, which these people have made so many bootleg games, whether being original titles like IQ Champion, or games based off of popular franchises. Island. You play as another red ball, but this time you're on an island. Eggs fall from the sky and you have to kick them off before they turn into mutant evil eggs? Again, the creativity in some of these games is amazing, but unfortunately, it's wasted on bad games on a bad system. Lightning. It's deformable from earlier, except the colors are different. Moving on. Magic Egg. Yeah, I'm not even going to try and explain this one. Man in Red. Sure, it's just IQ Champion, but it's awesome! You're shooting UFOs out of the sky with your 12 gauge! This is another one of those games that gets ruined by the fact that you can just stand there and cheat while holding the turbo button. Also, it looks like he's absolutely shredding a guitar. <laughs> angry Birds. Yes, Angry Birds. Not one, not two, but three Angry Birds games. The first one is a puzzle platformer, immediately what I think of when I hear Angry Birds. The second one is an action platformer. What do these have to do with Angry Birds besides having the characters like Red and the Pigs? Then there's Angry Birds 3, which is the only Angry Birds out of this trilogy to be an Angry Birds game. This is awful. I'm serious, you don't even have to aim your shot at all. The game automatically points you to the best possible angle, so you just have to press the A button to win. So yeah, the bootleg Angry Birds trilogy? Pretty bad. Plants vs. Zombies. Wow, an actual PVZ game on my GS5? Yeah, I guess so. This version of PVZ is so slow, but other than that, this is just a really watered-down 
port of the game. Sonic. Yes, even Sonic wasn't fast enough to escape the evil clutches of the GS5. Surprisingly enough, I have seen this bootleg before, it's just a hack of Adventure Island, but there's a sprite swap. Instead of Master Higgins, we have a fat ugly Sonic running around the island. Aimless. The title is accurate on this one, it's pretty much impossible to aim. And here we go again, that stupid song from Galaga and Garden Wars back, I swear this song is going to haunt me forever. Burrow Explorer, you're a boy in a maze-like cave with a headlamp that only shines as far as the GS5 AC adapter is long. Because of this, you're bound to die from these little frog creatures. This is dumb. Cannonade, this game is literally impossible, I'm not joking. You lose a life if a plane hits you or if too many planes hit your base. Just look at this, how am I supposed to hit all of these? Cub Adventure, here we play as a polar bear cub, collecting hearts. There's another cub that runs around and if you get hit by it, you lose. There's also seals, which it doesn't take much to know that polar bears eat seals. I thought I was supposed to eat the seals, but guess what? The seals kill you too. Yeah, the seals kill the polar bear. This poor cub needs a break, dude. Alright, this is the last game I'm going to talk about. And oh man, what a game. GIF War. This has to be one of the strangest games I have ever played. It's just a 2D shooter, you either play as an F-16 or an M1A1 just shooting down the enemies. However, the story and the concept of the game is what gets me. No joke, this game has digitized frames and pictures of real life containing people and real life political leaders. The story of the game goes on talking about Iraqi terrorist threats. Yeah, you can probably guess by now the GIF War is a game about the Gulf War, or maybe the Iraq War considering the date of the game. While playing the game, you can even see posters on the walls and along the boss on Wave 2 depicting... Historical figures. Usually for most of these bootleg games, you can find something on the internet about them, but for this game, I found nothing. This is just insane to me. Someone in 2003 made an NES game about an Iraqi war, which both wars had many casualties, and 20 years later, I'm playing it. Alright, I definitely didn't expect that one, but yeah, that's pretty much the GS5. It's so weird that these consoles exist, I think that they're absolutely hilarious, but there's things that you can find like GIF War that are just shocking. There's no reason for the GS5 to exist, this thing should have never been made, but it's hilarious that it does exist. Am I glad I played it? No, but it was funny to go through it and make fun of this piece of junk. Speaking of GIF War though, that reminds me, what is the age rating on this console? No way. Age 5? Who are the paint brains, the absolute head cases who thought this was a good idea? The GS5 needs to be stopped. Now you think I know just how to do it. <laughs>